Last winter, I was invited to join the Federation's ADAF Fellowship for Rabbis to develop vital skills related to congregational innovation and organizational change. There were six rabbis selected and we began meeting in March. Our teacher for most sessions is Abby Pfeiffer Mendel, the executive director of the Brittingham Social Enterprise Lab and an adjunct professor of entrepreneurship at the USC Marshall School of Business. She teaches us about design thinking. As opposed to traditional innovation in which the entrepreneur thinks of a product and brings it to market, design thinking demands that an entrepreneur start his or her intended users and study them and design solutions to address her or his users' needs. So what are our needs as a community? I interviewed approximately 15 members of our community, asking them to describe their day for me. I interviewed a range of people, women and men, working and retired, ages ranged from 40s to, let's say, older than 40s. <laughs> and I immediately noticed trends, similarities. All of us wake up really early and go to bed too late. Many of us use words like rushed or exhausted to describe our days. Each member I interviewed is overscheduled, overprogrammed, able to explain to me his or her entire day within precise 15 or 30 minute blocks of time. At the end of each description, I'd ask a simple question. If you could add time for one or two more activities in your day, anything, what would it be? Each person, each one expressed a desire to spend more time with friends and family, and each one expressed a desire to read or learn for greater intellectual stimulation during the day. I'm not sure how I can help create more time for you to be with your families, but I can help with the learning process. I can prepare Torah learning to go. As I explained in our quarterly, Kol HaShalom, which I think was particularly wonderful, I've launched a podcast called My Daily Offering. It's a three to five minute kavanah, an intentionality, a Torah teaching that hopes to bring wisdom, purpose, and inspiration to your day. Please subscribe to my daily offerings on iTunes or SoundCloud. For most of us, believe it or not, it's already on our phones, so you just have to search my daily offering under podcasts, and episodes will automatically begin downloading onto your phone. I hope this brings an opportunity for all of us to learn Torah, to remain connected no matter where we are every day. How could it be that we're all so different? We lead such different lives, different professions, different families, and yet there's so much similarity about our deepest desires. The simple answer is that we are a community. We have a lot in common. We're a group of Jewish people living in West LA who walked into this synagogue and felt a sense of belonging. We all opted in because of similar values. Simply put, we are neighbors. And that brings me to the film I saw this year that speaks to the themes I'd like to discuss this Yom Kippur. You know that as a rabbi filmmaker, I have to incorporate at least one film every high holidays. And that film this year is Won't You Be My Neighbor, the documentary about Mr. Rogers. I'm glad that this was a crowd-pleasing choice. <laughs> Born in 1928, Fred Rogers was raised with a love of God and a love of television. He became a Presbyterian minister. And after his ordination, he turned to television to find his ministry, his mission, 
and his congregation in his television show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. In full disclosure, I am part of the Mr. Rogers generation. I was part of Mr. Rogers' congregation. As a child, I watched his show. I took for granted his very simple core message to lead a life of goodness, that all people are special, and that we should all know our neighbors. And when I sat back in the theater this summer and watched him again as an adult in the documentary, I realized that we can't take his message for granted. We must treasure his message. In the film, Mr. Rogers says, and I quote, we need children to understand that what is essential in life is naked to the human eye. And with all due respect to Mr. Rogers, I'd only add that adults need to understand that as well. Humanity, love, friendship, kindness are all naked to the human eye. God, Torah, our place in the unfolding Jewish tradition, our right to our ancestral homeland, these are all too large, too awesome, much too powerful ideas to be visible to the human eye. Mr. Rogers spoke to generations of children who needed to know that they, that we were special, taught generations of children that common decency and goodness were the goals of our society. As I watched the film, I realized that Mr. Rogers served a function for our American society that the Torah plays for our Jewish people. For each and every time we open the ark, and I stand before this community holding the Torah. We stand together, assembled as we were at the foot of Mount Sinai, looking up at Moses carrying the Torah, God's instructions as guidance. We gathered at Mount Sinai as neighbors then. We gather here together as neighbors today. And after we receive the Torah, God tells us in Exodus, Ve'asuli mikdash v'shachanti betocham. Make for me a sanctuary, and I will dwell in all of you. At first glance, this commandment to build for God a sanctuary seems like the command to build the tabernacle, or the holy temple in Jerusalem. But the command acknowledges that the purpose for such a sanctuary isn't for God's dwelling. The purpose of building it is for God to dwell in us. For the Torah doesn't use the word boneh, meaning to build. It uses asu, meaning to make. Perhaps it's a space, a sanctuary, we have to make deep within each and every one of our souls. Perhaps we should read the command in the Torah as, make room for my sanctity within each of you, and I will dwell in all of you. Make room for godliness, for goodness, for true goodness in our souls, and then we will see what God intends for us, for society, and for the world. At the TED Women Conference in 2017, Anjali Kumar delivered a talk entitled, My Failed Mission to Find God and What I Found Instead. In it, she describes that her family is from India, and practices a relatively unknown religion outside of India called Jainism. Followers of the Jain religion form at most 0.00046% of the American population. As an adult, she found herself as non-affiliated with any religion. In her talk, Kumar discusses her spiritual journey to find God, which included dinner with witches, drinking volcanic water with a shaman in Peru, hugging a saint in a convention center, and finally, setting off to meet the faith healer, John of God in Brazil. John of God in Brazil claims to be a medium who channels the dead, saints, doctors, and others, who offers healing through prayer and, if needed, through actual surgery 
although he never uses anesthesia. And when a person approaches John of God, she or he is allowed to present three things, three wishes that you'd like for him to fix. For weeks before she left on her journey, Kumar mentioned the upcoming journey to the Brazilian healer, to her colleagues at Google, to her friends, to her family, to strangers at the supermarket, to the barista at Starbucks, and anybody she encountered. And she always offered the person the opportunity to give her the three wishes, and she offered to carry them with her to John of God. To her surprise, word spread quickly, and her email inbox quickly overflowed with emails from strangers, each with three wishes. The amazing part of this TED Talk was that every request she received, whether the person be Jewish, Christian, or Muslim, her colleague, the person at the coffee shop, or the stranger at the supermarket, every request contained the exact same three wishes. First, the person wished for good health for themselves and for their loved ones. Second, the person asked for happiness. And third, to find love. Can you imagine, deep down, people from all over the world share similar wishes, prayers for themselves and their families? If that's true for people across the world, what does it say about us, neighbors, in this room right now? How much more do we share in common than we could ever realize? At a time when society seems so polarized, so fractured, could it be that we've all been sitting here today, last night, last week, praying for the same exact things? At a time when community engagement is measured in name tags and quote unquote being seen or being heard, could it actually be that which is not visible to the eye at all? That which matters more to us, health, happiness, and love. We recite so many words during these days of awe. Can we dare to take a second and imagine what it would feel like to stop praying out of the machzor, out of the prayer book, and turn to our neighbors and confess what's actually in our hearts when we recite the words of Avinu Malkeinu, or when we beat our chests and recite al -Khet. For who are we praying for good health? For who are we praying for happiness? For who are we praying to find love? Who will live and who will die are the words we recite this time of year. Could there be a better time to share deep thoughts with one another, especially our families? This year, we'll try to address our collective wish to expand our intellect. We'll learn together in a more robust way. Not only will we meet to study on Monday mornings and Thursday mornings in adult education series, we'll introduce a community book club so we can be inspired to read together. We now have the Adat Shalom Synagogue YouTube channel. We've had 10 new subscribers since I announced it on Rosh Hashanah. And now my new podcast, My Daily Offering, I hope to have 400 new subscribers after the service. To listen to as a community, even when we're not sitting together. We'll offer more programming in the form of excursions, field trips away from the synagogue campus, and more opportunities to bond with one another like the upcoming Shabbaton at Brandeis Bardeen in January, off-site, together. The only way to improve this community is by becoming better neighbors, neighbors that appreciate one another. At his commencement address at Middlebury College in 2001, Mr. Rogers said, and I quote, I believe that appreciation is a holy thing and that when we look for what's best in the person we happen to be with at the moment, we're doing what God does. 
So in appreciating our neighbor, we're participating in something truly sacred. Mr. Rogers continued on in that graduation address. From the time you were very little, you've had people who have smiled you into smiling, people who have talked you into talking, sung you into singing, loved you into loving. So on this special day, let's take some time to think of those extra. Some of them may be right here and some of them may be far away. Some may even be in heaven. No matter where they are, deep down, you know they've always wanted what's best for you. End of quote. In a city with so many synagogues, we are a community in which people want to get involved. We are a neighborhood of doers. From Friday night dinners to Tat Shabbat, we do so much. And our challenge this year as a community is amidst all that we do together, can we connect with one another in a deeper way? While we're preparing for dinner, can we smile one another into smiling? While we're cleaning up after Tat Shabbat, can we laugh one another into laughing? When we greet one another, can we love one another into loving? Today on this Day of Atonement, when we encounter loved ones that we see and loved ones that we no longer see, can we do a better job focusing on that which our eyes cannot see? God, Torah, Israel, health, happiness, and love. Can we use the sense of mikdash, of holiness, today to bring out the goodness in one another? Ve'asuli mikdash ve'shachanti betocham. Make room for goodness in each of our hearts so that God can dwell in all of us. On this day of all days, can we understand that the Hebrew word v'shachanti, dwell, comes from the root shachan, which means neighbor. We have less than half the day left. Try to turn to somebody in this room. It could be somebody in your family. It could be somebody whose name you don't know. And try to open up to them about your prayer. Ask them about joining you at a synagogue event like a film screening or to join you in the new book club. Ask them about coming to a Dat Shalom together for a class or for a community dinner. There are many ways to begin this conversation, but might I suggest an easy way to begin, a familiar question to open up a difficult conversation Perhaps an invitation that God asked the Jewish people long ago, and Mr. Rogers asked me as a child through the television. A question for which we are long overdue to ask again. Won't you be my neighbor? May we rise up this year as a community that asks that question of one another with courage and openness and earnesty and compassion and love and may we all have the strength and goodness and godliness to always answer yes. And let us say, Amen. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Would you be mine? Won't you be? That's all I know. <laughs> I'm not as old as you. I don't want to go farther. <laughs>